This episode comes with a content warning. The following contains scenes of malicious violence. Timestamps and details in the show notes. Listener discretion is advised. You are listening to an Atomic Broadcasting production. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the feature presentation. And remember, do your part, such as like, comment, rate, and don't forget to tell a friend to tune in for an Atomic Time. Now, where were we? Ah, yes. The party questioned the sole survivor among their attackers, but failed to obtain the information they needed, so brought him to the local guard to arrest. As the party went their separate ways for the day, Hamir, distressed over losing control during the interrogation, investigated the helmet he had secreted from the cave. Seeking answers, he asked help from Uver, who put the helmet on his head. We're just a group of friends. It is out. Abby's turn to talk about the homework. Gosh, now. diddly darn it. <laughs> it is your turn. I don't want to talk about it. I, I felt the same way, but I didn't get a choice, so go. <laughs> Let's talk about that. After you talk about to. it, we'll get everyone's one That's to copyrighted. ten. Are we <laughs> actually recording now, though? Okay, cool. I, I don't want to talk about it. Okay. <laughs> I don't even know. I thought you were making sure we were going so you don't got to repeat up. yourself. That's, that's fine. We'll make it easier. Everyone, what's your one? We'll go around and what's your one to ten scale of Dark Crystal, the movie? <laughs> oh. Jenkins. Oh, that's are one we out of ten. one to ten? Ten's the best movie. Are we grading one on is, a curve? One, one is I never want to <laughs> see this movie again. No curves. No curves? No, you idiot. If you, <laughs> you get what you deserve. <laughs> no grace. <laughs> I the feel movie bad. Gets what it Cause I, I feel like people should at least watch it once. But like, if I was given the option to watch it again, I would probably say no. So maybe a three. Wow. Okay. <laughs> you said one was yeah. never again. Well, because it's so badly made and done and oh. uninteresting to you at all. Okay, then, like a seven. Dang, that's six point five. That's a high mark there. Well, he changed yeah. the thing. He made a curve. No, it's just the idea is like one, it's the worst movie you've seen. Ten is like the best movie. That's not you've what seen. you said. One, you'd never watch it. I, again. That's what I intended when I said. Oh, okay. Never watch well, it's it not again. the worst. Okay, for, so on that scale, worst I've ever seen, best I've ever seen. Four. Four. Okay. <laughs> so I one mean, above no, your like, initial choice. Yes. Three to, to seven six, to point it was five. Because like I've the seen, scale kept I've seen some movies I'd give nine, but I'd never watch again. Yeah. Same. All right, petite number. Oh, gosh, I should have been thinking about this. Uh, <laughs> no pressure, buddy. What's the scale again? <laughs> We've been over one this to ten. three times. One, best, one is worst movie ever, ten is best movie yeah. ever. I'm going to give it... Um, can I go into detail as to why I'm giving I the did. answer? Short detail. Okay, Short so detail. I'm going to give it a uh, six out of ten um, because it had a good story to tell. It had good storytelling. It had a good world... And it had those big, long-legged things that oh my were oh, yeah. really cool and fun to watch. I'd argue yeah. about the good story to tell, but the storytelling was good. And I also really want to know what they look like inside the, the long-legged things walking around <laughs> in just yeah. a meadow. Yeah. That, the the land striders. The land striders. Yeah. That's what land strider. I watched this in two sessions during my lunch times at work, so... Oh, okay. um, wow. All you right. know, I completely forgot the plot in between. <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> all right, we're gonna jump over to Sven. Oh, um, all right. So, in all fairness, this this is all personal opinion. It's it's not the type of movie that I'm particularly interested in. So, my rating is pi. <laughs> Three point one four one five. That's a in curve. its entirety. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna the rest of the uh, twenty the, the, the rest of like the we'll six hundred episodes going. that I think we had that we think that this is going to take, it's all just going to be pie. <laughs> right. So then you realize your grading then is irrational. Yeah, I, I realize. <laughs> Jordy, this pen, is personal pen, opinion. Pen, it can't be irrational. It's personal opinion. Hence my uh, <laughs> earlier uh, explanation. His, his opinions are real. They just might not be right. <laughs> Abby. <What? laughs> it's an opinion. I know. I was a joke. It's not a fact. All right, Abby, what, did you, yes. what, do you, what would you give it? Oh, gosh. 
if given the choice again, I don't think I'd watch it again. Interesting. Um, it was good for a. I now, I've now seen it. I can mark that off of mm-hmm. the bucket list, even though it wasn't on it initially. I was forced to watch this movie. <laughs> <laughs> sure didn't I feel anything. you. <laughs> I, was, I was forced. <laughs> I didn't have a choice. Sam came to my house and held a gun to my head until I watched it the was movie. A nerf gun. Sam did. doesn't even own a gun. Sam That's how it was a nerf gun. On Discord, Actually, owned the whole several time. X shotguns. <laughs> the most deadly of weapons. Uh, I would give it a four. Interesting. Probably. Fair. Copycat. All right. It was. <laughs> we had the same okay. exact opinion on it. I mean. <laughs> like, the plot was interesting. Some of the puppet stuff I laughed hysterically at because I'm like, that's bad. <laughs> but that's my- yeah, I wouldn't watch it again. That's okay. Probably. Um, Jordy, our GM, what, what, you've seen it obviously beforehand that started this conversation about <laughs> Dark Crystal. What was your rating for it? So first off, I'm giving it a six. However, mm-hmm. because of my pre- preferences in regards to watching movies, specifically, I don't really. I think my scale only goes up to like an eight. <laughs> <laughs> so nothing can be perfect. That's in true. Your eyes. Jordy <laughs> has not seen a lot of movies. So, no. So, uh, my rating for this oh, movie. I forgot. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. Skipped you. Uh, is it mine? A 10? I think is like a 7.5. Oh. oh okay. I like it. I love it. It's so I great, but like it, it, it doesn't. <laughs> it's one of those movies that Netflix. doesn't quite keep my attention when I'm watching it. Mm-hmm. I like it. I love the Jim Henson stuff. I I could watch. That's like the whole the, movie. I know. I could watch those <laughs> movies. Just only those type movies. Mm. Uh, but I like it a lot, and it's really fun. It's quotable. It's exciting. Mm-hmm. It's I'm very not a quotable. huge and I love Muppet the story. fan. So we need a variety show but, uh, created my, by Jim Henson. But I mean, it's, it's only but Muppets. It, it's not the best fantasy movie. It's a good fantasy movie. It's a solid fantasy mm-hmm. movie. I'd probably watch Crawl over Dark Crystal. I've never seen Crawl. You guys should watch Crawl. No, the no. new homework. No. Here we go. I don't no. even know what that is. So. <laughs> when you it's guys great. signed up for this podcast, did you expect it's a movie rating <laughs> podcast? No. Crawl is one of Liam Neeson's first films. Liam oh, Neeson? Really? It's a oh, really? Oh, you relief. told me about that. Oh, my, oh my gosh. Uh, I will it's pretty fun. Oh, anyway, Liam that's, yeah, Dark Crystal is I, great. Worth the watch. One thing that you should be prepared when you watch Dark Crystal, though, is you will be scarred because you get to see one of the Muppets naked, and it's 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 not, horrifying. It's horrifying. All of it. <laughs> it's absolutely horrifying. And that was the scene I was talking about. I'm like, I know they're beating him up, but I'm laughing because this is hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> on a, I on was another shouting note. at the screen that I did not need to see that. <laughs> <laughs> on, on another note, could we have a spinoff of this show where we just review movies called The Written and the Watched? Oh. <laughs> oh. All right, guys. Solid. If you want to watch or listen to The Written and the Watched... Oh, Let us we know. could stream it on Twitch, and then some it could of, be the written and the watch. Because watched. some yeah. of us watch yeah. a lot more movies than other people. That's, That's the yes. fun of it, though. Yes. Yes. And we I mean, all we watch have very, very different, different opinions. Tastes and those who well. can describe it, describes it to the ones who don't watch movies. That way they don't have to watch it. No. <laughs> so, I mean, that's no. so we take fun. turns. We have like two or three people. And we do a report. Or, well, there's six of us all together. So three people watch a movie and they write like a book report on the movie. The other three who did not watch the movie read the report and then try to like narrate scenes without having seen the movie. Hey, that sounds great. <laughs> it's it's long work. If I, when we make when we make the banter an office meeting. <laughs> <laughs> This is where we get all of our good ideas. Yeah. <laughs> That's really great. I, I, I will say, uh, as movies go, like, if you enjoy it, enjoy it. If you don't, yeah. you don't. Yeah. Everyone has their own different. I'd say give it a shot, and that's that's mm-hmm. rich coming from me because I don't. We're, we're definitely <laughs> like not here a shot to that's yuck true. other people's yeah. young lives. I'm Dark over here Crystal. watching movies that happened in the 50s and 60s. I hardly watch Brilliant. anything the new. The golden uh, years. Like, yeah. Uh, the Dark years. Crystal is like the textbook definition of a cult classic. Yes. That's, yes. I like, would heartily speaking of that. cults and classics. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh. Last episode, I think, ended off with a bit of a cliffhanger. So without any further ado, <laughs> <laughs> let's go ahead and jump right back into the Volden household. <laughs> the inside of the Volden household is cozy, warm, well lit. It's really everything that you would want or imagine out of just, you know, 
homeliness in no hominess homelessness <laughs> homelessness homelessness there's stew on the stove cooking and filling the air with the aroma of home cooked food and there's the awkward tension of having a question mark unwanted guest there's no question <laughs> I've made this very clear. Only through body language. <laughs> in verbally telling you. <laughs> in his defense, he's half deaf in his left ear. So with body language not and... not canon. <laughs> <laughs> with body language and normal language, you have communicated. Zephyr's just sitting at the, ca- uh, the kitchen table, I guess we were at. Yeah. Uh, tapping his fingers together, just kind of awkwardly... So, uh, I took my glasses off. I can't read. What's your name again? (laughs) Alward. (laughs) Alward. So, Alward, (laughs) um, you seem to be a bit uh, touchy around the subject of your um, family lineage. Uh, Are you... I'm talking about your father, yes. No, I I fully understand. I'm just trying to figure out if you're trying in your own uh in your own weird way to be polite or what he's he's passed away. He was a good man. He went off to fight and died in a war. And how long ago was that? 10 years. 10 years. Uh I Sorry to hear that. Um, and you believe that your mother is still grieving? Uh, no, I. She, she doesn't, she doesn't feel well most of the time. So I do my best to not get her upset and maybe cause a reaction of some kind. Mm, um, I know this is a strange question, but. All of this has been strange. (laughs) Do you often return home, or do you go on adventures and journeys like the rest of us seem to do? The past week has been the first time I've actually left to go forth. And, um, does she know? No. What, why, why not? Be, I, let us not talk about this uh, anymore. I'm, I'm sure the food's almost ready, and then we can just pass the time. Well, just so that I can mentally take note and with a pen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't notice you had a quill in your hand. Uh, I took it out of your hair. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> what? Well, it's not there anymore. Stop checking. Um, <laughs> uh, wh- what are the what? What is her name? Just so that I can address her as I'm leaving the home. How do you Vela? But I didn't name my mom. Her parents probably your, named her. Your Children grandparents. Normally don't I, I name know her as parents. mother. <laughs> Valia. Valia. Okay. Oh, crap. I actually had that written down. Yeah, I, that's why um, I was laughing because I was like, I'm pretty sure she told you yesterday uh, <laughs> or earlier. D- d- uh, do you have any other family members? How do you, how do you, <laughs> how do you ease that into a conversation? <laughs> You're taking I'm, a census. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking a census. Give me a list of all your family members. Now. I'm just curious. Who, who, who else um, do you reside with? Is it just you and your mother? Uh, no, I mentioned my... Why are you taking notes about my family? Uh, I am not taking handwritten notes. You just, you have a quill in your hand you and you somehow had an ink pot. I don't know where that came from, but. You didn't see anything. <laughs> <laughs> you told me about it. You're uh, right. I'm just curious, I guess. Well, let me ask you something. Oh, all right. Um. So I I didn't think about this until after you've entered my domicile. Um, that thing. I have a lot of things, yes. Will it go after my family? Oh, that thing. 
Yeah. Um, truth be told, uh, I don't know. Oh. I have seen it a few times. Um, and each time I don't really gather anything from it. And it kind of just disappears. But I assume that it has some sort of ill intent, and I, I like to get rid of it. Um, so far, it hasn't harmed anything, but I don't know. You guys don't need to know. Stop looking at us like that. <laughs> oh, they're just acting out what I'm saying. Oh, okay. I, is there normally, a, like, a time frame? Is it random? Oh. I, I need to know if I need to be worried about my family. Well, I don't have any alarms set, but... Um, I, I... You know... I, I was going to say this anyway, but I, I believe that after we... Um, after we eat your mother's very wonderfully smelling cooking... Um, I, I think I will take my leave. I, I won't stay here. I did have a, a room back at the inn. Um, I, I was just curious about your home life. It's been a while since I've seen a um, full family function. Um, they're, they're quite normal-ish. You could probably go down the street and or like watch a market. Please. That doesn't sound um, legal. <laughs> it doesn't, but... I'm not going to <laughs> just watch random people. <coughs> well, uh, um, if you must know, my uh, sister who should be here any moment, his name is Lena. Is her last name also Volden? <laughs> no, it's Capricorn. Yes, it's Volden. That's officially her... I can't see what I'm writing. <laughs> well, currently, you type <laughs> corpro. <laughs> corpro. <laughs> you need to put your glasses. Why are they not on? <laughs> because it's easier to He's not look character. at anyone when I can't see. <laughs> <laughs> For those at home, I have tilted my microphone up because it's much easier to see all of my um, materials. Not when you're not wearing your glasses. And if I, <laughs> if I put my glasses on, I will try to look at everyone. And that makes me sound like this. And that's not good. <laughs> they love it when you sound like that. <laughs> this is the most derailed episode. <laughs> I'm sorry, listeners. If there are any... <laughs> If everyone's exited by now, we wouldn't blame you. <laughs> so I appreciate you um, taking me in for as as momentary as it was, as um, brief. But uh, after I eat, I, I will take my leave, and I'll see you in the morning, I believe. All right, then. Um, what were we having, stew? Yes. Beef? Uh, I think pork. Pork. I think. I, I could be wrong about that. I didn't write that in my notes. It's it's okay. What does it smell like? It smells like pork stew. Mm. <laughs> I don't have a nose. <laughs> Wait, is that canon? <laughs> so Zephyr's Voldemort? No, nobody knows. He's a little tiny Voldemort. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's a vada cadavra, but... <laughs> anyway... <clears throat> Just so that you know, I can read it on your face. I have no intention of romancing your mother. Uh, I didn't, um... Yes, you did. Don't lie to me. <laughs> okay, maybe a little bit, but I mean... You can't lie to me. I am in your head. <laughs> no, you're not. I like to make you think I am. Uh, but you're not. I have no other convincing <laughs> tricks up my sleeve. I, I, I'm trying my hardest. This has been the most awkward <laughs> night of my life so far. You invited me. At that I moment, <laughs> Mrs. Volden, Valia, comes around the corner with a couple bowls of stew, and she's like, dinner's ready. Oh, thank you. It smells wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell the time by sniffing, but if I don't have a nose, that's a problem. <laughs> I've seen character art of your character, and I'm pretty sure he had a nose. Don't worry, I'm just using some magics. It smells like dinner time. <laughs> oh my 
What would you say? Like seven, eight, <laughs> nine, <laughs> thirteen. Thirteen is a bit early for dinner. Twenty-five. <laughs> That's a bit late. <laughs> there is that no such time. Took me a minute to figure out how many hours were in the day. Twenty-five hundred. I mean, if you want, it's just. It would be one a.m. <laughs> Maybe during. Uh, the savings of time. Let's stop counting no, no. days <laughs> by by days and do it by hours now. Anyway, what time is it? One million seventy eight out hundred thousand <laughs> hours. The dinner is another awkward situation. Not quite as awkward because with Vaylee and Lena at the table with the two of you, they kind of, you know, keep the conversation going in more normal routes. Every so often they'll ask a question about like, so, you know, how were things going yesterday? And I imagine Alward probably just very quickly gives a noncommittal answer and changes the subject Mm because we know we know that Alward doesn't really want them worrying. Periodically, I will, with a mouthful of stew, uh, like all dads do, take my spoon and just kind of point at it and go, "Mm, mm, 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 mm." (laughs) I can see it now. Mm. Yep. And after dinner, Velia is very pleased that you enjoyed the stew and is like, well, thank you for coming for a visit. It's always nice to meet some of Alward's friends. Uh, thank you for um, inviting me to your home. Um, uh, Alward did uh, mention that I could stay over, but I will be going back to our inn. Oh, it's it's no trouble. We could make up a space for you to stay. No, really. I, I already paid for the room, and I, I don't want to trouble them to get my money back. Um, it's it's all right. I'll I'll protect i'm your bodyguard right uh, <laughs> he um your duties are for on the road and i'll be back here. in the morning to i'll meet watch you over him. at the inn <laughs> all right i'll see you there boss uh. <laughs> well it sounds like the two of you have everything all worked out so you have a good night good night was mr zafir was it yes yes madam volton <laughs> and with that Zephyr steps out into the night air uh, at this point the sun has gone down and it's a bit colder out uh, there's a bit of a chill night wind kind of blowing through the empty city streets I'm gonna head straight back to the inn as you take your first steps in that direction you hear from an alleyway I. Hello, who is it? And a familiar face steps out and says, Hi, long time no see, Zephyr. And we're going to cut back to what's going on in the inn. If it's my landlord, I'm going to flip a table. (laughs) (laughs) Uver had just placed this ancient helmet of unknowable power onto his head. And as he did so, he felt an intense burning and itching sensation all along all of the runes covering his body. And they're beginning to glow with a red light as the burning sensation is growing stronger and stronger. It's burning. It's it's burning. Take take it off then. Uh, I'll try. I'll try. And the helmet comes off. Oh, that was easy. (laughs) No wonder we started with the Volden household. <laughs> you know, I was really worried. I was going to have to do a lot to this. Oh, no. We broke Sven again. <laughs> oh, is that all? Uber's just lying on the ground convulsing in pain. <laughs> I'm dying over here. Obviously. Yeah, we know you're on fire. We can tell. <clears throat> Sven, what is Uver's will bonus? Give me half a second. Didn't he succeed a will save at the end of last session? (coughs) Nope. Okay. So as you take the helmet off, your the burn burning feeling on your arms and like all the runes is beginning to subside and there doesn't seem to be any lasting damage but there's still just that sensation of like something very wrong just that that very uncomfortable unpleasant feeling. (sighs) That's... That's not a good idea. Yeah. It didn't do anything to you, though. No. Why me? Uh, maybe it's something to do with your tattoos that were glowing. So not tattoos. What? 
scars. Is that better? Yes, yes but 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 not in the I, I di- not in the traditional sense. No. The, the, okay. What am I supposed to call them then? <coughs> I don't know. That is. Then why are you getting upset at me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, 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 I still, I still feel it. I, I still feel that, that, that thing is. I, I don't know, but. I don't know if that thing is evil or that, that the, the runes are evil. That, 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 that the creator was it, but. I cannot do that again. It seems important to an evil, crazy cult, so I wouldn't expect much sense put into it. That was reckless. They that might like reckless. to be burnt. I am. I am not thinking straight. I am not. I am not thinking like I usually do. I, I am. I am not usually so reckless. But I mean, it wasn't long ago that you went into my head. Then that was reckless too. That that that, that this, but but. I, uh, d- I also went into an ancient library twice. Oh, that's normal. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a point. All right. In, in, in all my years of, of exploring it and, 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 and finding lost knowledge, this, this is the first time where I felt like I am... I am I, I've seen traps. I've seen monsters. I've, I've, I've seen all these, all these things, but, but nothing that has... That has taken me, and 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 stolen me. Th- 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 my my mind messed messed with my mind and and. Oh, about that. <laughs> I haven't gotten a chance to tell you. What? Well, when I peered into your brain, inside of my head. Uh, 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 yes. Uh, there were just patches of your brain missing. So those memories aren't coming back. So sad. Unless we find them and, I guess, patch them back in. I don't know how to do that. Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait. You know, Alward likes brains. He probably might know how to do that. He's a psychic. (laughs) (laughs) But then again, Alward's not very good at much. uh, Yeah, give me the helmet. I'll put it back in my pack. You're you're saying that that my memories are, are literally no longer there. Right. That they have... Yeah, like someone like cut cut them out or unsewed them, weaved them out. I guess like patchwork, just missing patchwork, really. Why, why me? What did I find? What did I find in that library that would someone would do something and and what? Perhaps, perhaps it was, perhaps it was that thing that those, the, uh, our three compatriots, that the, the, the they did whenever we were uh, <coughs> in your mind, as it were. Maybe perhaps it was that thing. I, it could be. I don't know. But if it's information we're seeking, I do know a fellow. It, it, I, I am hesitant to do anything so reckless again. This wouldn't be as reckless. It'd be, you know, more asking for information. Is that reckless? Then I think I will be more inclined to do that, but I don't think I should touch that element again. That, that's why I took it from you. <laughs> well, let's hold on to it, because there's apparently an evil assassin called looking for it. And, but I'm tempted to throw it away, because I at the same time, I really don't want assassins coming after me. That's not why I'm here. But wait, I don't think that we can let anyone else have it. I don't know what it is or what it did, but that thing cannot fall into the wrong hands. Right. Well, obviously you can't hold it right now. But when we get back to the others, I'll pass it off. Yes. <coughs> uh, but that... But that's... Let us talk about it in the morning. I think I need to go sleep. Sure. If you uh, do, you and have a room in here too. I forget. Uh, yes, yes, it's, it's down the hall. But, but perhaps I should get a drink first. Sure, sure, buddy. Can you walk? He 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 slowly gets up, kind of still shaking, but 
firming up. I, I, I think I will be okay in time. But right now I need to go clear my head. All right, well, I'll come with you because I don't want to be alone with this helmet now. Uh, that, that is fine. Let's just, let's just go get a drink together, perhaps. Sure. Oh, we could give it to Nero's. I think she's down there. <laughs> so the two of you make your way down the stairs back into the common area of the the inn. It's fairly busy by this point, as many of like the laborers and workmen in the area have gotten off from their shifts and are grabbing a last drink or two before they head home for the night. Uh, but you still have little difficulty finding Neros in the crowd. Neros, what have you been up to? Is this is this the um, inn slash whatever it is for uh, Tim the Bardis? Mm-hmm. Cool. She she's singing with him. Awesome. <laughs> and the tune that you're singing is it more of like a customary, just like you know, just a folk song or something, or is it more of a drinking kind of song? It's a drinking song. And the barkeep does not mind. Good. <laughs> You better not. <laughs> we may have words if he does. Maybe we'll just ignore her. I, I, don't, think <laughs> I, I don't think we need to disturb her. She seems busy. Maybe. Do you think we need her? I don't want to just... I don't think we need anybody right now. I will. But Let's set up booth near her. Okay. But uh, it is mindless enough that perhaps it can clear his head. Well, if we're close to her and someone tries to kill us, then she'll be involved. <laughs> that's, that's, that is a very odd way of thinking, my friend. But it's generally how I think. I am starting to understand. Uh, <laughs> any waves to the barkeep. So the two of you order your drinks and sit down awkwardly close to Neros without <laughs> making any eye contact. With <laughs> <her>. <laughs> <laughs> you're not still glowing, are you? No, I, I didn't. You're a little bit sore, but otherwise back to normal. He, his hands stop shaking as he has he's drinking, and then they might start shaking later. We'll find out, but <laughs> <laughs> for different reasons. It's Nero's. They're not being stealthy at all, so you would obviously notice them coming up and sitting down at a table, like, right next to the stage where the bard is set up. Not looking at me? Not, obviously, not looking at you. Oh, what's the problem, guys? Don't admit that you know me. You, you looked busy. Uh, we didn't want to I'm busy you. trying to get everyone to have a good time. Now, come here. There's a guy at a table who's just like, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> He knows what I'm talking about. Let's go. Come on. What, what do you mean? What, I'm what, eating food. Uh, yeah, you can eat and sing at the same time. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I'm not doing that. Thank you. Fine. Fine. Uh, Whatever. Uh, Uber. What uh, about you? Uh, Uber looks at you, just kind of finishes gulping his first pint down. Come on. <laughs> Sits it down. Uh, uh, a couple more pints and you'll be, you'll be up here with us. Come on. I, uh, uh, it, it has been a, a rough night that... Uh, and he just yeah, waves I've had a, I've had for another... <laughs> a rough day. Almost died. That's why we're celebrating. It's true. Are you feeling all right? I'm fine. And you can tell she's out of you. <laughs> uh, Doing great. Uh, and I, I just imagine the pint comes and he's just like downing it <laughs> yeah <laughs> and the innkeeper is just like watching you go and he's like torn between oh that's that's pretty quick to go through a drink but also he's a dwarf he could probably handle it <laughs> <laughs> and he points and beckons for another. <laughs> another another round I don't usually drink right. this much but I think I will make an exception tonight <sighs> I'll have fun Tim, with that. Tim, another song, another song. Uh, yeah, um, wh- what's, what do you want to sing next? Ah, oh, no, you choose. You're good at it. Uh, do you know, do you know the Avalia's fifth? I was starting a song. <laughs> <laughs> you seemed like you didn't know what to sing. That's just how it starts. It's like, uh, a <laughs> long time ago. <laughs> but I guess I'll sing something else now. 
<laughs> Wait, what's the, the, the something shuffle? What, what is the, <laughs> the this, this shuffle? song is the Fuffle Shuffle. I hate this <laughs> one. <laughs> uh, do, do you know the song of Erodian and uh, Van Heiser? No. <laughs> you could teach it to us. That is a shame. <laughs> Uwe, Uwe, you could teach it to us. You can't play my lute, though. It's mine. You'll have to just sing. It's a pretty, but I'll follow along if I figure it out. He's real good at It's a he really it. easy tune, Tim. Oh. <laughs> I can't even play that one. Why are you getting into this? You don't want to dance <laughs> or sing. It's true. Tim <laughs> <laughs> has made it obvious he wants to be also a, a party pooper. So, um, come on. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> is in the middle of his third bite. What are you talking about? <laughs> you say you're going to teach Tim that I, song. I, I, I said that. Uh, you could that, teach Tim that, a song. That uh, I'm pretty sure that's what he said. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> teach him the song. Come on, buddy. We all want to hear it. Come on. I, I'm not much of a singer. Uh, yeah, but, uh, neither am I. Nothing will stop me. Teach him the song. Teach, teach, teach him the song. Teach him the song. Teach him the song. Education. <laughs> <laughs> Why did I come here? <laughs> In the land of uh, Chalden, there, there was uh, Arian, and uh, she... She met with a man. Of <laughs> <laughs> I don't like this song. Play it louder. And as Uber continues <laughs> staggering his way through the tune, <laughs> Tim kind of starts like picking out the harmony and starts strumming chords along with probably by like the second verse, you know, I imagine Neros is kind of catching on to the tune, starts kind of humming along as she's trying to pick out the words. Oh, she's singing at the top of her lungs if she knows it or not. <laughs> it's a completely different song. <laughs> By the time you get to the third chorus, you've got everybody in the t- the inn, except possibly Hamir, <laughs> singing along. And she slayed the man down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Down! Another verse! <laughs> And there's a drink. <laughs> Someone you don't see quite who hands you a pint. Ah, <laughs> oh, psycho. He just downs it. <laughs> and I think it's time I hit a bit. Oh, all right. If I had a nickel for every time Sven's character passed out in a bar, <laughs> I'd have two nickels. <laughs> uh, wait, hold on. I think the first time it wasn't in a bar. It was on the streets. <laughs> oh, there was a bar nearby, right? I'm, I don't remember. Uh, hey, we're going to grab some see. water and just splashes it on Uber's face. Oh, uh, yeah. it, is, it, is, it, it, is the library closing already? Yes. Hey, buddy, it's been closed for a while. Oh. Do you know where you are? How many fingers am I holding up? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so Uwe grabs her hand. Shakes it. <laughs> Shakes it. I, 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 have we met before? Yeah. <laughs> I'm near Rose. Do you remember me? Oh, the, uh, yes. How many the, have you had? The, uh, Four. Can you hold your liquor? Uh, uh, but it, it was more than... Wait, how many was it? Well, if you uh, lost track, then you're doing it right. I imagine with everything that's happened to his head in the last 48 hours, he's oh, a little he's more fine. susceptible. He's totally fine. I don't know what you're talking about. I <laughs> look at his wobbly knees. He's fine. He's he's fine. I I am. You need to okay. go to bed, buddy. Uh, yes. Yeah, uh, let's get uh, you to I'm... bed. Let's go. <laughs> uh, 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 Tim, continue without me. Tim very confidently strikes a chord that has like one wrong note and then fixes it. Yeah! <laughs> I've got it right. covered. You grab his feet. I'll grab his shoulders. All right. Uh, there's no need for that. I, 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 I don't think you can. No, nope. it's too late. It's too, we're all picking you up. You can't go anywhere. He's just going to continue talking. <laughs> Why? <laughs> uh, it is fine. Which like, room are you in? Uh, uh, <laughs> where's, where's your key? 
it it, it is. Uh, he just pats around until he. I I don't know. It's in your shoe. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear not, it jingling. <laughs> not to be um, but didn't you rent a room with a bunch of other people? Correct. Oh yeah. What's this in your shoe? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is. Uh, uh, I don't remember, uh, but it 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 it. I don't. I, I I think I was in a room with other people. Oh right, <laughs> Nearest and I were the only two uh, sane enough to get our own rooms. Uh, yes. All right, in you go. I'll <laughs> kick open the door and just toss you. As we've been walking, Nearest is like stumbling what? a little bit, trying to keep up. <laughs> Not the best help. It's all right. I've carried many a drunken man. <laughs> I was in the military. I, I, I am a dwarf. You're also a man. Yes. You're a man dwarf. Dwarf man. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I lay see down here. Yeah. Sleep. Rock a boy, you ray in the bunkhouse. <laughs> All right. You'll have lovely voice. Oh, if thank it you. wasn't so loud. It's not that loud. Oh, maybe it is. Maybe are, I should go to bed. Are you going to bed or are you going to revel more? Uh, what time is it? Uh, nine after nine. <laughs> Where are the people who could tell time when you need them? <laughs> that here, there you are. No. It's probably hmm, getting close to midnight. Oh, maybe I should go to bed. Yeah, yeah. You guys have a good one. U- Uver's already stumbled over to a bunk. Whether or not it's his, he doesn't know. <laughs> He's just passed out. <laughs> We set you down on a bed, and then you get up oh. and walk over to another <laughs> bed. <laughs> <in my bed. laughs> well, this isn't the wrong bed. Just... <laughs> so with the two revelers safely at least brought to the bunk room, whether they stay there or not, Hamir, you don't know. I imagine that you're probably heading back to the room that you'd rented. Uh, I'm actually just going to sit in the bar longer. Gotcha. And as you make your way down, the activity in the common area is starting to subside now that the catalysts have been removed. <laughs> Tim is trying to keep up the activities and the spirits and stuff, but it's just not the same. The, the mood is kind of gone. Meanwhile, while all of this has been happening, back in a dark alleyway in the night of the city of Joel, we see Zephyr who has just been called over to by a man in this shadowy alleyway. Hey, Zephyr, long time no see. Uh, y- yes, to you too. I'm, s- I'm so sorry about this, but I see a lot of faces. What was your name? Uh, Roger. Roger. You remember me from that job yeah. three months ago? I Yes, the, the one where I did the thing, right? Yeah, the one where you did the thing. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry about that little mess up. Um, I promise it, it's all fine now. I fixed it. Uh, they're they're not a problem anymore. That's right. That's right. I can tell you're a man who keeps up the loose ends and takes care of them. And that's that's what I'm needing you to do tonight. Well, you've got another job for me. I've got another loose end. Oh, not from one of my jobs. I I can't imagine you'd been involved with this one. There's a there's a fella just got admitted into the jail. Don't want him in that jail no more. Do you want him anywhere? That would be preferable. Not anywhere. Some specifics I must um, tie up here. Uh, do you want him not in the jail, not anywhere, but do you want him... Not, not in the jail? Well, imagine we could find a special place for him, six feet under. Ah, yes, now I know what you're talking about. Let's, uh, let's tie up this meeting. Um, I'm gonna need a name, and, well, that's really it. Maybe a face? Uh, uh, don't actually give me a face, that'll be my job. (laughs) You mean, you need a name for your target, or a... Yes. Oh, uh, not your name, it's Roger. 
you know me. I wasn't sure if you were like needing like a persona or a fake name to work with. But no, no, I come up with those if if necessary, but probably not in this case. Right, right. Name's Eric Aridkin. Do you mean Arid's son? Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> okay, Thank that you. makes more sense. <laughs> Arid. His name's Eric Aridson. Um. Seems he ran afoul of some adventurers in town earlier today. Got beat up and dropped off in the jail. And there's those who want to make sure he doesn't spill on some beans he shouldn't. Oh, I didn't write his name down, I believe. Um, is he missing a hand, perhaps? I don't know. I haven't seen him myself. Just got this job passed on down to me. Oh, oh. How much are we talking? 50 gold. <laughs> not Jeez. bad, not great, but um, I think I can make that work. Um, are you needing this job to be done alone, or I, I have some friends that uh, I could get involved? I trust your discretion. All right, well, done deal. It will be done when I do it. Better do it soon. Don't know when those adventurers might come back and try to squeeze some more out of him. Well, I promise you they uh, won't get the chance. That's what I like to hear. You're a real <laughs> professional. And he kind of slugs you gently on the shoulder. Roll for damage. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no. He miss. <laughs> <laughs> Hit your armor. <laughs> How did you miss? You're standing right there. <laughs> You're just that quick, eh? Yes, I... You blend in. My The shadows work in my favor. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, would you like a contact back once the job is done, or...? Well, you'll need to get the money. Oh, I figured you were giving it to me now. Well, you haven't done the job yet. I have a reputation. You think that that would... You know, pay me now, I do the job, it's a done deal. Make a diplomacy check. Ooh. First roll of the night. No, technically he rolled to hit me. Oh, right. Second roll of the night. <laughs> oh, that. <laughs> <laughs> Completely misses dice tray, throws off table. <laughs> there we go. Uh, that is a good 10. Well, I do know you. You do good work. You got a reputation. I don't got that much on me. I'll pay you half now. And he hands over a small bag of coins. I'll count it later. I appreciate your business. Now you may go to the shadows from whence you came. You can you can find me in the marketplace tomorrow about noon. I know that. R- right. Into the shadows, and he just kind of backs up into the shadows. It's a like well lit. His it's arms. a well lit alley. <laughs> <laughs> he, he backs up a long way before he gets to the shadows. Maintaining eye contact. <laughs> just shimmy his arms. <laughs> shadow, shadow, shadow. Just gonna stare at him and wave. The whole <laughs> well, after that, um. I may be a little late, gentleman and lady. <laughs> that was the guy that we chopped off his yeah. hand. Yeah, right? yeah, one hundred percent. I didn't write yeah. it down. You've got it right. <laughs> um, well, I guess if I've got cause, where is the jail? I should know that you do because know I that. put him there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you know where it is. But it's Ryan kind of in the center of town. I'm gonna go start preparing. Uh, for the job right and the camera kind of watches as you walk down a different alleyway into the shadows and then turns to the side and like dollies in through the window back into the Volden house that's such a cool shot very complex <laughs> shot took months of prep <laughs> that was where half our budget went it, yeah, <laughs> that one shot alone Inside the house, uh, Valia is just like collecting up the last few of the dishes from dinner and is getting ready to start cleaning up. Where's Lena? Because I don't want her to be a part of the. I don't want her to like overhear the conversation. With how late the dinner was, since things were a little bit delayed, when you and uh, Zafir had showed up a little bit unexpectedly, um, it's already Lena's bedtime and she's already been tucked in and is in bed. Um, so I'm going to. Uh, use my mage hands to sort of gather all of the extra dishes and take it into the kitchen and 
um, whenever my mom enters the kitchen, I'm just going to grab her attention and say, um, do you have a, uh, a moment to chat? Of course. Uh, um, so I don't, uh, I know I haven't talked, uh, t- t- too much about, um, what my job is having me do now. Um, but something happened, uh, today and I, I just, I wouldn't feel right if you didn't know a, a bit about it. I, I don't, I don't want you to worry, um, but what I'm doing now is uh, potentially very uh, dangerous. Uh, as you saw, I, the bodyguard, I'm expected to uh, help out uh, whenever possible, but um, somebody almost died today. Uh, and uh, um, I, I, I can't imagine me not coming back and you not knowing where I'm at if that makes sense she looks a little bit like shaken at first but as you've kind of finished through the whole sentence and explained the idea she's kind of appears that she's like you know catching up to things and taking it in stride and she she nods and she's like Alward every day you're becoming more like your father uh, Alward doesn't know how to take that, so he just, like, pauses for, like, a good ten seconds trying to collect his thoughts again. Because <laughs> he's like, is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? Anyway. Uh, and, um, right. Uh, if that were to happen, I'm sure there would be enough money to survive off of, but... Um, Alward, I'm not worried about that. You be safe. Right. I, I may not with um, this new position I may not be uh, back as often as I'd like and I may end up being gone for months maybe even a year at most I'll always uh, keep in contact of course I'll write and uh, find a way to send you the letters maybe there's a postal service I'm not yet made aware of Um, (laughs) what? (laughs) postman Peter (laughs) (laughs) The, G- the GPS, the Galarian Postal Service. Yes, the GPS. <laughs> um, I just, I don't want you to w- worry uh, with everything going on. You have enough here uh, to think about. So I, I'm going to go to bed now. I have to get up early and meet with everyone. And then I have to do research and then leave for Copper Burger again. And yeah, so... Thank you for the stew. And are you like kind of hanging back or are you just like booking it out before she can say anything? So I I feel like there's probably a brief moment of hesitation before I leave, like trying to realize I just said all that, take a deep breath and then like start walking out. Yeah. So I imagine, you know, you walk towards the camera and we just see the look on her face as she's like, she has more to say, but she just doesn't know how to say it. And we get a Star Wars wipe transition. (laughs) Wait, we go from the epic... Oh, right, we spent all our money on that. (laughs) I actually had a transition. Oh, I do. It's me with a transition. Get out of here. It's it's you running across the screen. (laughs) (laughs) No. We would go around and see Albert's face as it slowly transitions into some ethereal elvish being sitting across the booth from me. That's actually a very cool transition. It is. And, uh, that is also where our money went. <laughs> <laughs> That's where the other half went. Yeah. Yeah. The other half of the budget. We don't have any money left. <laughs> Hamir kind of was looking over and was like, I don't know how comfortable I feel going to see your family. And he sort of makes some motions like it's trying to talk, but it can't talk. And it's got this like wound there in it, right in the neck. So. <laughs> Hi, Jenkins. And it's kind of motioning around. I'm like, ah, I know. I know. We're, I, we might not be here again for a while. And I know. We... Listen, I don't think I've made a very good impression. And I think you know that. <laughs> What gives you that impression? <laughs> the fact that you said I'm a disappointment multiple <laughs> times? or 
and it sort of looks a little frustrated and then like reaches in to one of its pockets and like as it's reaching in the background there's like the whole bar room well it's mostly empty from actual people have like the 13 ethereal people around some of them have like ethereal drinks that they're drinking and they just kind of look like they're resting <laughs> and he pulls out this little locket and like most try like would put it in my hand except he's a ghost <laughs> and like but I feel something physical and I pull and I have this little locket and I'm like fine fine if you're going to keep bugging me about this I'll go I think I know where he is went <laughs> and so Hamia gets up not 100% sure he knows where Alward lives but he's pretty certain he did <laughs> and he starts heading outside <laughs> I sincerely hope you get lost just because it's going to be hilarious. And as he's walking down, because you said the jail's close by, right? Yeah, it's not far. The elf is walking alongside me and we kind of see him look a little worried for a moment and then just disappear. And then Hamir lets out a breath and that pale green misty fog comes out and starts like turning towards the jail. And so Hamir kind of looks over and feels kind of a push at his shoulder from nothing. And then he starts heading a little bit towards the jail. And as you turn to look in that direction, you hear a familiar voice from the shadows behind you. (coughs) Severe, that's you. (laughs) What are you doing here? What? What are you doing here? I'm... Are you nocturnal as well? <laughs> <laughs> that was a joke. I uh, yes, but no. Um, what are you doing here? I'm going for a nightly stroll, and was drawn to the jail. Uh, yes, so I know, I know. So was I. What is someone no, else there? No, Hello. No one do you need to worry about. I was just thinking, I don't need to worry about. No, no, no. Yes. No. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm distracted. I'm concerned. Or I really I'm a little worried about okay. the fact that this guy knows who we are and is still alive. Also, Uver was going to watch him at like four o'clock, but then he got drunk and fell asleep. <laughs> and Uver really wanted to watch this guy overnight and did not do that. Wait, are you talking about the man we cut off his hand? Who else would I be talking about? I don't know. He's Al- the only guy Alward. we put in jail. Uh, I, uh, well, I don't learn people's names, and that's all right. Okay, I'll let you in on a little something. Um, oh, great. I well, maybe I. No, won't. you're fine. You're fine. Sorry, I was I'm approached just... tonight um, with a job. <laughs> And it just so happens to be that I need to rid myself or themselves from this guy. Uh, but before before I do this, um, I, I, I am entrusting you, since we seem to be on the same page about things, he seems to know a little bit more than he's leading on. So oh, really? I'm thinking maybe he has another hand, a couple I, of feet. I'm a li- I I didn't cut off his hand. I watched you do it. it. Well, I I know it looked like that was me. It, it definitely was. I was staring <laughs> at you, circumstances. smiling it, the entire time. My eyes were wide open. I would never forget something so beautiful. <laughs> Oh, that's so good. Normally, I would be okay with this. But there are circumstances, and he kind of looks over his shoulder, that make me feel like it's okay at the moment. Like it's, I have to do this. To kill or to maim? Either. Probably kill. Which I wasn't planning on doing, but everyone else is asleep. Well, it sounds to me like he may know more. So I think before we kill him, we find out more. Oh, okay, sure. Is that why you're, are you doing that right now? Uh, yes, I was 
on my way. I just finished my preparations. Who are you looking at? Well, this, no, no, at the moment I was looking at the jail. Is there, How many guards are awake at this time? Just I'm one? I'm not sure. I only prepared over there. I just got just here. Peter Tool? Peter. Peter O'Toole. Peter O'Toole. I thought you said the sequel to Peter. Peter Tool. No. Peter what? One was there this morning. <laughs> what? At least I remember that. What? Peter O One. Peter O What? <laughs> what are you talking about? I learned his name specifically. Maybe that's the same person, and I'm just confused. I haven't noticed. I haven't done recon on the building just yet. I just got here, and you were here. Okay. I didn't want you to get in the way, honestly, but I think you may be an asset. All right. Sure. Would you like to help me um, case the joint? I suppose so. Let me get things straight. This is um, a napping, not a killing yet, because I don't want him to be in the jail. I'm I'm going to do my best. If we can knock him out first. That would be great. That would be great, yes. I'd like to not kill this man, but I'm probably going to. Uh, uh, So we'll work it out. That works for me. Let's, um... Uh, how many guards do I see outside? One. Hamir takes a quick drink from his chalice. (laughs) There is one... One guards. Outside. Outside, Yes. yes. I figure that won't be an issue. Um, should we take the sneaky approach or the... Um... Sneaky is probably better. All right. I'd rather not hurt any guards. You'd rather... Not. Permanently hurt. Um, I'd like to do some preparation on the building now, if that is... Da-da-da-da-da. If that is all right. Yeah, so what's what's the plan? What are you going to do? Um, I don't know. What does the building look like? So overall, it's mostly a stone structure, you know, made out of like natural rocks from the area, piled and mortared together and such. The second floor is more like wood beams with planks and such but that first floor is like where the prisoners are housed the second floor is like bunks for the guards and stuff a question would a thievery check work to like case it essentially of like kind of knowing if it's a standard kind of prison in the sleigh house yeah yeah i don't know how good you are as if you're at thievery oh i'm horrible i am just the worst i can do it is that sarcastic yes that is sarcasm okay i have a six i have an eight all right yeah, why don't you go ahead and make a theory? I can try and aid you. I have a. I think I have that cooperative bonus. I have the plus four mm-hmm. now. Okay, that is a 19. 24. Which means you get a 20. Nice. So, yeah, 19 with that plus one from Hamir. You get a 20. Um, as you've been kind of examining the building from the outside and kind of like, you know, applying your understanding of how these sorts of situations and buildings work you feel like you've got a really good sense of like where the common areas are where the hallways are and you're like definitely this wall here is where the cells are because this is where the the walls are the thickest and the most secure do i notice any um weak spots or vulnerabilities So I'll say yes, but I'll say let's do this a little bit more narratively and say what weak spot or vulnerability do you find? I noticed that a door to the side is not ajar yet, but a guard walks out and seems to walk out into the night. But before the door fully closes, I kick a pebble into the frame to keep it slightly ajar without latching. That's cool. Nice. And he doesn't notice. He he hears the pebbles, pebble like skittering and just kind of looks down, just sees a rock and just shrugs and keeps just walking on. He doesn't notice where it lands perfectly just as the door was about to close. I have our inn. Good. How many guards are there? Did you see any well, other? There was the one in the front. Minus one. one just left. He just left, yeah. Did you see any others? Or is this the one? Uh, I don't know. Let's There's... ask the all-being, all-knowing <laughs> being. <laughs> The all-knowing being says there's still one guard out front, but through this side door that you just propped open, another guard has left. So there's still the guy out front, but one guard has left the building. Gotcha. You don't know at this point if there are any more inside, but you would imagine there are still a few guards sleeping on the second floor since it is night. You don't know how many have been assigned to like patrols and such at night. I'm going to very slowly open the door, but can I sneak in some way? 
that would work with me walking through a door. Just like moving in quietly and trying not to be seen from by somebody on the other side? Yes. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Go ahead. Well, I guess that's a secret check. What's your stealth bonus? Uh, that would be a plus eight. Do I need to aid? Are you going in at the same time? Um, I imagine so. Uh, I give him the signal to come. Okay, then I will roll, I guess, an aid <laughs> stealth. Uh, it would be a separate stealth check. Oh, okay. I wasn't sure. Since it's like a group stealth. What's your stealth bonus? Six. So, Zephyr, like a shadow, just slips through the door. It hardly even seems to move. And Hamir, only slightly less stealthily, slips in behind him. All right. What was the question? I guess I didn't write it down. What was the name of the woman in the expedition who I was, tried to... The Chalaxian. Uh, Sithri Charles. Sithri Charles. Is there anybody in this hallway? I uh, the hallway right now is abandoned. There is a small lantern hung a little ways down the hall where there's like a cross way, what, crosswise intersection of two hallways. But where you are right now is in the dark. Is this lantern glass covered or is it open? Uh, it's a glass covered like oil lantern. Uh, I'd like to see if I can put it out. So you stealthily approach and you just slowly twist the knob as the wick goes down and the lights drop. And now you're in... Not not pitch black. I, I want the flame just like barely there. Okay. Then you are now in dim light and Hamir can still kind of see. <laughs> I took account of this. That's why I just stopped talking yeah. and started laughing because I was like, now it's pitch black and <laughs> Hamir can't see. <laughs> so... I don't know if Hamir has low light vision. He does not. So uh, he I can, take a he minus can... two penalty on perception checks, oh. visual perception checks. Fun. Yeah, low light lets you treat dim light as if it. Or was is bright. it minus four? Ah. Is it two? Um, I think so it's two. It's a minus two penalty for perception checks, and you treat creatures as concealed. concealed. Yeah, that's what I thought. Fun. Peeking around the corner, how many uh, people at all do I see? So looking around the corner you find that this is like the main hall that goes down with like the cells and from your vantage point, like without going down the hall and looking in each cell, it does seem to be relatively unused. Like you do see like, Oh, there's a figure under a blanket over there in that cell. And there's somebody over there in that cell. So there are a couple people in there and you do see at the opposite end of the hallway, there's a guard who's just kind of sitting on a stool, just slumped against the wall, whether he's asleep or just not paying attention is unclear. I need to do something. <laughs> Where are you, by the way, in all of this? Behind you. Oh, okay. Gently caressing your back. Um, <laughs> would you say that he is 15 feet from me? I would say he is 45 feet from 45 me. 45 feet. Um, I'd like to slink my way to attempt to stay hidden, but also get within 15 feet of him. Gotcha. So with the stealth roll that you had earlier you were able to get up to within 15 feet and he doesn't seem to notice. Lovely. All right, I am going to use haunting him. Before that happens. I'm not going to use it yet. <laughs> Before that happens, Hamir, are you following behind or are you staying back at that cross section? Uh, since there, we, when we saw the guard being there, I'm going to just hang back and look a little natural while staying hidden. Okay. Uh, and let him, if he looks like he has something in mind for the guard, so I'm going to let him do it. Okay. All right, now, 15 feet away from the guard. You said you were using haunting him? Yes. Gotcha. And is that a fortitude save from him? Yes, I believe so. so. Before you get too far into it, it does say only one creature can hear this. Yes. That's why he chose that. I just Ooh. I just want to bring that up before you start narrating a bunch of guards showing up. Oh, yeah. No. Okay. The guard critically fails his fortitude oh! save. He's deaf. Yes. Wow, exactly what I wanted to do. Um, so what happens now? So what does he? What do we see happen here? Um, well, you hear him cast the spell. At least I would assume that Hamir hears him cast the spell from his uh, mm -hmm. location in the darkness. Um, that's a great question. I just cast it. I don't know what it sounds like. Haunting him. <laughs> Editor, it's, it's, it's insert a, that part where Uver was singing. <laughs> 
<laughs> and the, the woman, the, the lady, kills him. And she's smart and down. Uh, it does say a jarring him, so. That's why I said Uber. And maybe it's like. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it just I mean, insults I can, him. I'm just a, a, like, I'm, I'm imagining like a low, like a rumble of a ha. <laughs> Just kind of. I guess it would be loud if it deafens him. <laughs> exactly. He's the only one who hears it, so it's fine if it's yeah. loud. Yeah. So in his own mind, ears, his mind's ear, he just hears this deafening, just discordant rumble, and he just like jolts up from the chair and is like, oh, 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 and just like takes off his helmet and then is like grabbing his head. Oh, and he also takes sonic yeah. damage. Hold on. Ask. He takes three whole damage. His ears begin to bleed. He takes the three damage. He's dropped his helmet on the ground, and it kind of thunk, thunk, thunk on the cobblestones. It's not a huge clatter because it's, it's a well-padded helmet. He's just, oh, oh, and he looks up, and he, like, in the dim light, he just kind of sees just your silhouette because there's the lantern behind you and not behind him. He just sees, like, your silhouette. He's just, oh, oh. I'm going to attempt to knock him out. Go ahead and let's say just make an attack roll. That is a 14. That is a success. And because we're in a narrative situation and not like a full set, full fledged combat, you just clobber him and he just collapses. And the camera is like on the ground with his helmet and he's just in front of the camera and he's just out cold. I lift up my fingers and just go, I, I wiggle them towards Hamir and just say, Here. Hamir <laughs> moves forward and then. Um, Gags the unconscious guard. He's already unconscious. You don't stick gag. your hand down his throat. <laughs> not like that. Not <laughs> just like continuously that. have your. That is how I have just, a gag. If he wakes right. up, he's not going to start screaming where everyone can hear him. Oh, I expect him to scream. Um, now that the area is secure, I would like to take a look to see if I can find Mr. Eric. I'll also Erickson. see if this guard has keys. He does. <laughs> I'll pick those up. <laughs> that is a good. That's I. Yeah, that's a good. Well, what if he wasn't in that room? <laughs> I just wanted to make sure he was here before I went for the keys. I think the keys will work. Just a couple cells down the line from that end where the guard was on the stool, you find your unfortunate quarry. He seems to be under a blanket and already asleep. Uh, I can go up and open the door. Okay, and then. What's the plan? Are we just grabbing him and leaving? Yes. Okay. We'll go at the same way we came in. Then I'll grab him. Well, uh, cover his mouth first. Right. Maybe gag him the I same way you did the guard. I will. So I'll go up and open the door and then have some rope ready and grab him and start trying to pull him out. We'll make him sure he's quiet. You're not choking him, are you? No. Not fully. Okay, we need to keep his vocal cords fine. What's your degree of proficiency in athletics? Uh, like expert. Okay, so you <laughs> succeed. <laughs> yeah, I have a plus 11. Yeah, against a, a sleeping guy who's already not in great physical shape at this point. Yeah, you've got him tied up and completely restrained. You're able to gag him before he even wakes up. You're not tying his wrists, are you? Because he's missing one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> too soon. Tie one, his arm up with, to one of his feet. <laughs> Hog tie him. <laughs> Anyway, we will slowly and quietly and creepily drag him out. Yeah, at this point, if you look at him, he's got more mist coming out, and his eyes are kind of glazed over. I feel like I should respond to that, but I don't. No, that's fine. So where do you take your captive? Um, How far? Oh, you said it was on like the shore? Yeah, uh, it's not far from the edge of the river. Uh, I'd like to go to the opposite side of the river if if not too deep. So the river is used for shipping, so it wouldn't be something you could just ford with your oh, feet, but so there are bridges. Deep river. Um, yeah, let's go to the bridge. Are you okay with that? You're carrying him. It's not the first time I've killed someone on a bridge in a role-playing game. So I'm going to take one of the bridges to try to get on the opposite side, cover my tracks. I quietly motion to Hamir. Come on. Mm -hmm. Let's step away, and then we can do our interrogation. Has this guy been awake the whole time? What's going on with him? 
if he doesn't know who we are at the moment because it's dark, he might think this is a good thing. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> he is bound and gagged. <laughs> hey, some you got to do what you got to do. And you glance back at Hamir, and he's just kind of silently following you and just nods. Uh, at this point, I do take notice of his foggy mouth and uh gonna go to the most secluded area that i can all right so there's like an alleyway that's like it's used to go somewhere but was like walled off for a new construction it just kind of dead ends and there's some crates and stuff that you can easily you know find yourself a little nook where you wouldn't be seen by a passerby all right put him down here <laughs> against the wall slam is slammed against the wall. Is he still alive? Yeah, he's fine. <laughs> okay. Hamir doesn't say anything. He just slams him against the wall and lets him kind of slide down the wall. All right, I'm going to remove the gag. <laughs> but I need you to stay very quiet. Otherwise, Hamir, you won't have the opportunity to be quiet. Hamir pulls out his axe and then slams his foot down on his wrist. With the the other wrist, yeah, that still has the a one hand. that doesn't have it, the one that still has a hand. <laughs> and you're going to answer our questions. <laughs> and I remove the gag. <laughs> what more do you want? I want more of what you were giving us before. <laughs> I believe you do. I'm not going to tell you where they are. You're monsters, both of you. We can show you monsters. Tell me who tried to kill us, where they are, and who they are. It's, it's my family. You know that already. Yes, but where are they? They're everywhere. They're bloody everywhere. When they find out what they did to me, you're going to regret it. Nobody will find out what happens to you. I'm not telling you anything more. You can take my other hand. I don't care. Would you like to take his foot? We'll leave his hand for a moment. At this point, we're going to go ahead and draw a veil over the scene. That's, that's good. And narratively, we'll say, no matter what your characters choose to do, he refuses to talk. Hamir sort of lifts him up, whispers something in some sort of weird language that seems to freak him out, and then just kind of kills him and tosses him into the river. In one word or the other. Um, That's we should also water, man. attach yep. him to like a brick or something to keep him from floating. That's fine. That's people drink this water. People shouldn't. Right, well, we're both just standing by the river. Hamir sort of puts his hand on your shoulder <laughs> and looks at you as a lot of the mist just starts seeping out like intensely and then just very quickly sucks all back into him and then his eyes kind of go back to normal um that was strange but i think i'm going to attempt to ignore it and i hand you the a sack of like 10 gold <coughs> coins I, okay thank you for assisting me i uh Sure, yeah. And, um, it's for the best that no one, everyone who knows who we are, except for that one guy who got away, is dead now. I, um, in all honesty, and I've said that a few times tonight with you, I originally was not going to kill this man. He did nothing to deserve death from my hand. And ultimately, I appreciate you dealing the final blow. It wasn't my choice. And whose choice was it? A bad deal. And he reaches into his pocket, into his bag, not his pocket, and pulls out the helmet. 
He's like, you should hold on to this. It's better with you than with me. All, all right. Since you're so discreet. Is this the helmet that was in front of the statue from that cave we went to? Yeah. The same helmet that these cultists want. The same helmet that almost killed Uver earlier today. What? Did he put it on? Yes. Why? <laughs> As a scholar, he is not a smart man. He was desperate. Many of us are. You're you're well connected, right? You know how to get information. I mostly know how to kill, but um, I attempt... Do you think you could reach out to some informants about something for me? As I've said many times before, I usually work alone, but... I've run into one or two people in my past that I might be able to. Let's let's call this a job, and he hands you the ten gold back. A job, then. And I take the gold. <clears throat> I'm looking for a young woman, probably early twenties. My daughter. This tattoo, any kind of motions to that tattoo that comes out? To the two lines that come down from his eyes and kind of curve away. Come down from his right eye and curve away. She has the same one. Red hair. Loud. <laughs> and when did you last see her? About two years ago. When she was... When she wasn't there anymore. Would you like me to keep this from the others? If they've been listening, they know I'm looking for someone, so it's not too big a deal. But you don't need to tell them I'm having you contact people and doing a job for me. Will do. I'll see what I can find out. This is important to me. I understand. I understand. I assume there's some connection, considering you have the same... I told you she was my daughter. Yes, yes. No, you didn't. I I did. did, Yes. Sorry, I only... I usually kill people, not find people. It's... I usually know where they are. Yes. Oh, and that helmet? I'd suggest giving it to Volden. I don't want it anymore. I'm not going to be a target anymore. Are you saying I am now a target? They want the helmet. And one person knows we have it. You're discreet. People don't know you. But Volden's smart. He'll probably know something. All right. You're staying in the inn, right? Yes. I got my own room. Well, I, I think we should head back that direction. I need to stop somewhere first. Do you know where Volden lives? Honestly, I couldn't tell you. Um, I was there, but <laughs> it's quite a ways out. That's fine. I point in the general direction that I came from. Family has a way of finding each other. I just gotta swing by. I'll be back at the inn. You can come with me if you want, but... I've already been there once tonight. I'll stay out of the hair for now. You enjoy the stew. I'm not stopping in. And Hamir's gonna leave now. <laughs> and we cut to a long shot with the camera down the river as the two of you walk opposite directions from the bridge. And we fade to black. All right, Sam, and what new hero point card did you get? Oh, I picked Misdirected Attack. Uh, play after a foe critically fails on a melee strike against you. Uh, the foe rerolls the attack, targeting one of its allies within range. Nice. At the dead of night, back in the arena, we see two cloaked figures coming in with a small mule-drawn wagon, approaching the last few bodies that were left from your fight with the cultists in the arena. The smaller figure walks up to one of the bodies 
grabs the hand, the grabs the hand, like holds it up, looks at it, and then just like drops it. And he's like, they'll pay for this. All of them, they'll pay. And the other figure comes up and puts a hand on his shoulder and is like, do not worry. We will take them to mother. She will take good care of them. And that's the end of that scene. Cool. I don't like that. I don't like, I don't that, like that at all. This has been an Atomic Broadcasting production. Pathfinder, Galarian, and the Lost Omens world setting are copyright of Paizo. More information at paizo.com. Music in the show is from Monument Studios' collection, as well as assorted artists with some original tracks composed by Jordy Hake. More details in the description. If you enjoyed the show, please remember to share with a friend, and we'll look forward to seeing you again next time. Just call me daddy. (laughs) (laughs) We were almost ready, (laughs) Pajit! Why? (laughs) Why? What are y'all still doing here? (laughs) It's done. (laughs) Go home. Go. It's done. Come back next time. Go. (laughs) Goodbye. See ya.